This is our second lecture on computed tomography. After today's lecture, students will understand the relationship between noise, contrast, and spatial resolution, and how they are affected by technique parameters, image processing algorithms, and image display size. Students will also learn about some artifacts and how to minimize and correct for them. There are several factors that affect contrast resolution and noise. These are listed here. There is overlap between these factors. We shall start by looking at technique factors on the next slide. KV, MA, time, and pitch are fundamental determinants of contrast and noise in a CT image. KV affects the beam energy, X-ray penetration, contrast, and noise in the image. A higher KV for improved penetration comes with increased Compton scatter and more noise which cannot be compensated by increasing MA because of tube power limitations. A higher MA or MAS improves contrast by increasing signal relative to noise, but the patient dose will be higher. Pitch affects contrast in an image because of an increased or decreased scan overlap. Lower pitch improves contrast because of increased overlap, and higher pitch reduces contrast because of decreased overlap. Slice thickness affects the number of photons used for image reconstruction and so affects contrast in images. Recall that relative noise in the image is inversely related to the square root of the signal. Signal is the quantity of photons, so anything that changes the quantity of photons will affect image noise. Thicker slices combine more photons from other slices and are less noisy than thinner slices. When the slice thickness is doubled, the noise decreases by a factor of the square root of 2 and so on. However, a thicker slice means less detail in images. The choice of image processing kernel is a fundamental and important trade-off between spatial resolution and image contrast or noise. In Siemens, lower numbered kernels have better contrast or less noise but have poorer spatial resolution. Higher numbered kernels like H60 have more noise or poorer contrast but higher spatial resolution. This is true for GE kernels also, where a standard kernel is poorer spatial resolution but less noise, while bone kernels have higher noise levels but better spatial resolution. While filtered back projection produces images that are characteristic of the object, the images are also noisy. Noise is often compensated by increasing MAS or dose or viewing thicker slices or using a softer reconstruction kernel. These approaches all result in either high patient dose when MAS is increased or lower spatial resolution when thicker slices or softer kernels are used. The use of iterative CT reconstruction methods can significantly reduce image noise in comparison to filtered back projection reconstruction. This means that lower dose images using iterative reconstruction techniques will be equivalent to higher dose studies using only filtered back projection. Using iterative reconstruction can improve the image quality while keeping those the same and also maintaining the spatial resolution. This group of images compare a filtered back projection, statistical iterative reconstruction, and a model based iterative reconstruction side by side. The model-based iterative reconstruction has lower noise and better detail appearance. Deep learning algorithms have potential to provide better image quality than model-based iterative reconstruction. This slide compares the image quality of deep learning with standard filtered back projection and statistical and model-based iterative reconstruction. Aside from the technique factors, image processing kernels and image reconstruction methods mentioned on the previous slides there are other factors that can affect spatial resolution and noise in a CT image. I've listed them here, but we shall go through them next. One factor that is outside our control is the X-ray tube focal spot distribution. In radiographic imaging, we use the smallest focal spot for acquisitions that require high spatial resolution. Although we don't get to choose focal spot in CT, the distribution of the focal spot has an intrinsic effect on spatial resolution. CT systems run at very high MA, and this can increase the size and distribution of the X-ray focus, an effect called focal spot blooming. Larger focal spots mean lower spatial resolution compared to smaller focal spots. In CT, because of the use of reconstruction kernels, the spatial resolution is controlled more by the kernel used than the focal spot size. Blurring caused by gantry motion can potentially reduce CT spatial resolution if not corrected. 
Blurring can happen because the X-ray source and detector array are moving relative to the stationary patient, both in the angular dimension and along the Z dimension when doing helical acquisitions. One method to compensate for gantry motion is focal spot rastering in both directions. Methods to reduce gantry motion effects are built into the design of the scanner and do not require user input or interaction. Detector element size and sampling influences the resolution. Smaller detector elements and oversampling methods can improve spatial resolution. When a particular detector configuration is chosen, like say 0.625 mm by 64 or 1.25 mm by 32, the beam collimation is the same, but the spatial resolution is better with the 64 slice configuration because of the smaller element size of 0.625 mm. A few slides back, I mentioned that the reconstruction kernel affects contrast in CT images and that with better contrast kernels, the spatial resolution is poorer. The effect is the same when considering just spatial resolution. Spatial resolution in CT can be controlled by selection of a reconstruction kernel, but this also affects image noise and contrast levels. Higher resolution kernels are noisier than lower resolution kernels. Because CT images can be reconstructed multiple times with no dose penalty to the patient, it is convenient to generate both high spatial resolution and low noise, better contrast image sets separately. Different manufacturers have different names for their kernels. GE uses standard, bone, sharp, edge, and langs, while Siemens uses letters and numbers like B31, B41, or B80 and C20 as an example. Letter C is donating child, and C20 is a child kernel that has less noise, but also has lower spatial resolution. After the patient is scanned with the techniques and detector configuration selected, the projection data are reconstructed. We shall look at simplified reconstruction approaches in the next few slides. Image reconstruction in CT starts with projection data. Projection data starts with linear attenuation coefficient information. The basic formula for linear attenuation coefficients is shown here. These are used to create hans full unit maps of the patient's anatomy. These projection data can then be reconstructed using either a simple back projection or a filtered back projection. When projection data is reconstructed using a simple back projection, there is no prior filtering of the data. These images show data at different projection angles for the object shown on the top left. As more angles are included in the reconstruction, the image of the object takes shape but is blurred because there is no filtering. The bottom image shows how the data is actually handled. A sinogram is first created and Fourier transformed to form the image. The images on this slide show the object from the previous slide reconstructed with a filtered back projection algorithm. The filtered image of the object is much clearer than in the simple back projected reconstruction. Also notice that as the number of projection angles is increased and the data is filtered, the image is a better representation of the object. The bottom image shows a filtered sinogram image and its reconstruction on the bottom right. There are different filters used for reconstruction. Filters have different characteristics but are mainly made up of a ramp and a high frequency roll off. We shall see filters on the next slide. Filters used in CT typically have a ramp and a roll off. The ramp removes low frequencies to the left and the roll-off removes high frequencies to the right. The Shep Logan filter is shown as the black plot on this slide. It is a ramp filter. Several filters are often combined to remove low frequencies and high frequencies. The composite filter used here has a Shep Logan ramp to remove low frequencies and a roll-off for high frequencies. With back projection imaging, different filters affect the image reconstruction process. If we look back at the filtered back projection images we saw two slides back, with 30 projection angles, there is significant noise in the image. This noise can be reduced by using different filters shown on the previous slide. Filter number one does the best job of reducing the projection noise and filter number five is the worst. The previous slides showed simple back projection and filtered back projection reconstruction. Most scanners use filtered back projection, but the images are noisy. Iterative reconstruction is a way to reconstruct less noisy images. Although iterative reconstruction methods can reduce noise, as higher levels of iterative reconstruction are applied, 
the image loses spatial resolution. Image display matrix also affects image quality. In CT, images are displayed on a 512 by 512 matrix. A 1024 by 2048 matrix provides ultra high spatial resolution compared to a 512 by 512 matrix because the pixel size is smaller for the same field of view. Whether displaying images on a larger matrix means a higher spatial resolution will depend on the detector element size and the focal spot size. Smaller detector elements and smaller focal spots mean the reconstructed image data will have small details that can be revealed by a larger image matrix. For example, the Toshiba Aquilion Precision is a scanner that combines some of the features we mentioned on the previous slide. It has detector elements that are 0.25 mm thick, so small slices can be selected for reconstruction. It also has the smallest CT focal spot of 0.4 mm by 0.5 mm, so the spatial resolution will be intrinsically better than X-ray tubes with larger focal spots. It also displays images on a 1024 by 2048 matrix, while most CT scanners display images on a 512 by 512 matrix. The image shown is an ultra-high resolution image from Toshiba. So far, we have been learning about factors that affect contrast or noise and spatial resolution. Let's look at how we evaluate image noise and spatial resolution. We shall first start with image noise. Noise can be evaluated visually and with measurement of the pixel standard deviation in a region of interest. In most manufacturers' QC tests, noise is the pixel standard deviation in a water phantom or the water portion of a solid phantom like the ACR phantom. Influence of MAS on noise is shown in these images. Decreasing the dose by a factor of 4 from 285 to 71 MAS doubles the noise from 8 to 16. Spatial resolution can be specified in the XY plane or along the Z axis. In the XY plane, spatial resolution is determined by the reconstruction kernel used and is quantified by using the modulation transfer function or MTF. Along the Z axis, Spatial resolution was traditionally determined by slice thickness selected and is quantified using the slice sensitivity profile. With multi-detector CT scanners, the Z-axis resolution can also be quantified by the MTF. The plot of MTF at various kernel settings demonstrates the influence of the image processing kernel on the spatial resolution. The middle image shows a spatial resolution difference for objects in an image quality phantom. These images show that using the bone kernel results in more noise but better spatial resolution compared with a soft kernel. The bottom image shows a Z-axis MTF for various slice thicknesses with the thinner slice having the best spatial resolution. Let's now look at some common artifacts. We shall start with beam hardening artifacts. Metal artifacts in CT can be caused by beam hardening or photon starvation. Beam hardening occurs because of the polyenergetic nature of X-ray beams. As the beam passes through an object, the low energy photons are absorbed more rapidly than the higher energy photons, so the beam becomes harder as its mean energy increases. Beam hardening artifacts appear as capping artifacts or may appear as dark bands or streaks between dense objects in the image as shown in the images above. When contrast is used, Streaks can appear due to beam hardening effects of contrast medium. In theory, beam hardening may be reduced by using a higher tube voltage for scanning because there will be a higher proportion of high energy photons compared to low energy photons. This is similar to using pre hardening filters in the X ray beam. Other approaches like calibration correction and using iterative reconstruction can also reduce beam hardening artifacts. Dual energy techniques can also be used to create virtual monochromatic images at different KEV settings between 40 KEV to 200 KEV. This allows users to freely select the optimal energy for maximum diagnostic image quality. Streak artifacts are caused by photon starvation when photons pass through highly attenuating structures. The result is that very noisy projections are produced at these tube angulations. The reconstruction process magnifies the noise, resulting in fine, bright, and dark streaks appearing along directions of greatest attenuation. Photon starvation is corrected by using tube current modulation or adaptive filtration. 
Tube current modulation increases the current in denser areas but leads to higher patient dose. Adaptive filtration changes the filter profile to allow more photons through thicker anatomy. The bottom image shows photon starvation with corrections using adaptive filtration. Streak artifacts caused by photon starvation are worsened by any kind of motion like swallowing or moving the jaw when dental fillings or implants are present. An artifact from dental fillings is shown on the lower image. Excellent immobilization can reduce streaks made worse by motion. Recently, manufacturers have included metal artifact reduction algorithms as options on their scanners to help reduce streak artifacts caused by metal. The top image shows the effectiveness of metal artifact reduction software. Metal artifact reduction software come with names like IMA from Siemens or OMA from Philips. SEMA from Toshiba and Smart MAR from GE. The RSNA source below has more artifacts. View aliasing results when a limited number of projections is used for reconstructing an image. An image of a mouse head is shown. With 50 projections, it is clear there is aliasing. Most commercial scanners use between 1,000 and 3,000 projections to reconstruct images, so view aliasing is not apparent. The bottom image shows view aliasing due to undersampling of the edge of the block. Partial volume effects occur when the CT voxels are large enough to encompass several types of tissue, such as bone and tissue, or tissues from different organs. This is often because of the reconstruction of thick slices. Partial volume artifacts are not as common these days because of the small voxel size of most CT images. The images here show that with a thick slice, a small lesion is not as visible as when a thinner slice is reconstructed. Cone beam artifacts arise because of undersampling of objects in the Fourier space. If a scanner has a wide cone angle, cone beam artifacts will appear if the proper reconstruction correction for cone beam angle is not used. Image B above shows an object that has proper sampling along the Z axis for a scanner with a small cone angle. There is minimal cone beam artifacts. The same object is imaged with a true cone beam scanner showing the cone beam artifacts in the bottom C image. Motion artifacts are due to patient motion. To reduce motion artifacts, the patient anatomy is restrained. If restraints are not desirable, the rotation time can be reduced, say from 1 second to 0.5 seconds or from 0.5 seconds to 0.25 seconds if the scanner is capable. This will help capture the image as fast as possible. In this case, dual source dual detector scanners are very useful because they allow fast rotation times because each tube only has to cover half the rotation of a single tube scanner. Ring artifacts appear on images when one of the detectors is out of calibration. The detector will give an erroneous reading at each angular position, resulting in a circular artifact. The top image shows several ring artifacts on a patient image. The bottom image also shows ring artifacts on a water phantom. This is corrected by recalibrating the detectors. Windmill artifacts are due to the use of helical scanning and reconstruction. It is due to overlap of several projection data over several detector rows during acquisition and reconstruction when large pitch values are used. The image on the left is a 12 mm diameter acrylic sphere obtained with 0.6 mm section acquisition and pitch of 1.75 showing a windmill artifact. The right image also shows windmill artifacts likely because of a large pitch value that was used. Windmill artifacts are corrected by using different reconstruction interpolation schemes and also using different pitch values. Let's finish up with a few questions. First question, which of these is not a way to reduce metal artifacts caused by beam hardening? The choices are, first choice, using a higher KV. Second choice, pre-hardening filters. Third choice, increasing the slice thickness. Fourth choice, dual energy techniques. The correct answer is the third choice. Increasing the slice thickness is not a way to reduce metal artifacts caused by beam hardening. Next question, spatial resolution in CT imaging can be improved by all of the following except, and your choices are, first choice, Reconstructing the images with a soft kernel. Second choice, using small detector elements of 0.25 millimeters. 
Third choice, using a reconstruction matrix of 1024 by 2048 for display. Fourth choice, having an X-ray tube with a focal spot size of 0.4 mm by 0.5 mm. The correct answer is the first choice. Reconstructing the images with a soft kernel will not improve spatial resolution. Next question. Noise in a CT image can be reduced by all of the following except, and your choices are First choice, increasing slice thickness. Second choice, increasing MAS. Third choice, decreasing slice thickness. Fourth choice, using a lower pitch. The correct answer is the third choice. Decreasing slice thickness will lead to an increased noise in the image. This is the last slide. Thank you for watching this presentation.